This tricky topic covers the concepts of validity and reliability and specifically relates these two terms to the IQ test. In almost all aspects of our lives, our merits and values are judged or determined by some sort of test or assessment. From a very young age, we're tested all the way from the classroom to the doctor's office. And in all of these tests we perform and are subjected to throughout our lives, it's important to ask how useful is this test or how useful are the results this test is producing? So for example, how good of a test is bench press for athletic abilities such as football? Should the NFL and CFL be using this as a measure for which players they draft or not? Or can measurements of the human skull really tell us about the individual's brain and therefore mind within? We'll come back to this example in more detail at the end of this tricky topic. We can begin to answer these very important questions with two different concepts, those being validity and reliability. To begin, validity is asking the question, how well does the test actually measure the concept or construct that it claims to measure? So, for example, is holding a measuring tape to the sky a valid way to measure the circumference of the sun? As we all should know, this is not a valid way to measure the sun. The results from this method of measurement would be completely unrepresentative of the true circumference of the sun, and we know that there are much more valid ways to do this measurement, like using the proper mathematical formula. So bringing this into the context of IQ tests, when measuring the validity of an IQ test, we would ask, does a person's IQ score accurately represent their intelligence? This question is obviously very important and can be broken down further into two specific subsets, those being construct validity and predictive validity. So to begin, construct validity is asking the question, does a test measure the concept or construct it's claiming to measure? So for example, does an IQ test actually measure intelligence, similar to what we just stated in the previous slide? The second being predictive validity, asking how well do test results or IQ test results positively correlate to real world outcomes? Coming back again to the example of IQ tests, do IQ scores correlate with school grade achievements and job success? In terms of predictive validity of the IQ test, it actually has a very high correlation with school grades all the way from kindergarten to university. However, it does not predict happiness or satisfaction throughout the lifespan. The next measure that we use is reliability. Reliability addresses the consistency of the results. It asks how often will a test yield the same results under the same conditions. So for example, the roll of a standard die will not have good reliability for getting the same number twice in a row. You'll only have a 1 in 6 chance of rolling any number twice in a row. Another and perhaps more exciting example could be getting a hole in one in golf. Most golfers have met another golfer who has hit a hole in one before, or perhaps they even have themselves. But it's important to ask yourself, what do you think the likelihood that one of these people or even yourself could hit another hole in one is? Or do you think the fact that a golfer has hit a hole in one before is a good measure of their day-to-day -day golfing ability? Is this one incident reliable enough that you can conclude anyone who has hit a hole in one before could play at the level of Tiger Woods, let's say? The answer to this question is undoubtedly no, and the reliability of hitting a hole-in-one is therefore not very high and does not equate to being a world-class golfer like Tiger Woods. So in contrast to these last two examples, the reliability of the IQ test is actually extremely high. On a scale of 0 to 1, the IQ test has a correlation coefficient of 0.9. The test retest reliability of the IQ test is very high, meaning that if you take the test again, there's a very high chance that you will get the same score again. And this has been shown to be true even over a number of years. Another important concept is internal consistency, which is also very high on IQ tests. This measures how well the questions on the test are assessing the same dimension aligned with one another. For example, does a person get the same relative result on question 1 and question 2 if both questions are aiming to measure working memory? Well, on the IQ test, the answer is yes. So in review, coming back to our initial question, how useful is a test? We have two main ways to assess this now, those being validity and reliability. We'll go back to the one example we briefly talked about earlier, where we asked about the usefulness of measuring the dimensions of a skull to learn about the inner workings of that person's mind. 
And this is a practice called phrenology that was fairly commonly used in the beginning of the 19th century. And this is a perfect example of how tests can be reliable while being completely invalid. The test-retest reliability of phrenology is very high because the bumps on a person's skull will not change much or at all from one examination to the other. However, the validity of the practice is completely absent, as in no way do the bumps on a person's skull measure or give insights into the inner workings of their mind. That concludes this tricky topic looking at validity and reliability. Thanks for listening.